Beyond that boundary, some friends, many enemies. Over that sea, Japan is coming closer to New Zealand. The harvest was late this year, but we cannot be late. We do not live on rice and hero worship. We eat good things, won from our good, rich soil. But our crops are no longer the plentiful fruits of easy labor in a land of peace and plenty. Now we begin to think about simpler things than the luxury of living well. Things like keeping alive, while the leaders of 70 million dark-skinned people in the north look covetously south at the paddocks and the pastures in New Zealand. Last year, we sowed 12,000 more acres in wheat, and more oats and barley as well. The grain ripened, while Japan struck up Malaya and the Indies. The crops were gathered, while Singapore was falling and Palembang in flames. Now crops are armies in reserve, food for the mouths of people standing steady in danger. Sheaves are soldiers, grain is ammunition. Behind these peaceful scenes, there is the urgency of war. No harvest was ever more urgently gathered. There was need for haste in the paddocks. Japan was hurrying. There was haste in the steady rhythms of the workers and the crops, haste in the mills. Round went the word that the grain this year meant food for a nation standing to arms, that the crops this year had something to do with liberty, that all we could grow had to be grown, in farm or orchard. Gathering the fruits of our good soil this year meant a better chance of freedom to sow again next year. Now the land has been ploughed again and will be sown again. And next year we will gather another harvest. This land is ours.